Hello, this is Jeff Byers. I'm going to take you through creating a low poly and high poly dice. And we'll go ahead and get started. Again, please realize that I go um, can go very quickly. And so you can pause this by hitting the space bar if you're using uh, QuickTime. All right, let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and go to Create. Under Polygons, I'm going to turn off interactive creation. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a cube. Let's go ahead and uh, reset settings and create. We're going to create two of these, so let's go ahead and do a control D. When I do this, I'm going to go into my uh, layer editor channel box. Um, yeah, as you can see, I can go back and forth between clicking on control A, that goes to my attribute editor up here, and control A, and then again uh, goes to my channel box and layer editor. So with this selected, it doesn't really matter which one I have selected, I'm going to go ahead and type in, I'm double clicking on that, and that should uh, bring up uh, the edit layer uh, dialog box, and we can type in high poly, okay, and click save, and, and then turn the V off, and then click on this one and uh, create another one, another layer, and we'll call this low poly and save it. Now you do have a choice of creating colors for these. So you can double click on this and create a red color for this. So if you go into wireframe, um, you should be able to see that color. Let's take a look at this again. There we go. There it is. So you can color coat things if you want to, and let's do the high poly as a yellow, and save that. Okay, so there's my high poly, and there's my low poly. Okay, it's not real important that you do that, but you can do it by double clicking and then changing the color. Make sure you save it though. All right, so we've got the high poly. Let's work with our high poly first. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the F key, the frame, and I'm going to go and hold down the space bar and go into Insert Edge Loop Tool. Always go into the option box and reset the settings. You can close it once you do that. Go ahead and create edge loops. And I'm going to hit the 5 key so I can see a solid view. Again, I'm just kind of winging this as far as the uh, where I put these edge loops. I try to be consistent though as I'm placing them. They don't have to be perfect. Okay, that looks good. So that's going to be our high poly. Now I'm always going to, before I do a high poly, I'm always going to save my um, edge loop version. So before I do that, I'm going to go to Edit, Delete by Type, History, and Modify Freeze Transformations. Right, when I do this, I'm going to go ahead and make a copy. So I'm going to go to Control D, and I'm going to click on this icon right here, create a new layer, and assign selected objects. So I click on that, double click on this, and this will be my duplicate. Alright, so as a duplicate, I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to turn my high poly on, which is on right now. And once, you, once in a while you have uh, hanging edges. These selected edges, this is kind of a bug in Maya. What you do is you select everything, just click off. It, they'll go away. All right, so what we're going to do now, we're going to go ahead and, and basically um, smooth this. But right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and talk, uh, talk to you about um, doing um, high poly. So if we really wanted to add a divot, we'd have to create uh, divots. Um, uh, like you see in dice, and you'd have to uh, create, recreate uh, six sides. So you'd have the one through six, and um, this this can be costly as far as time goes, because uh, creating these divots and actually laying them in here and and uh, creating that type of um, geometry um, is time consuming and can cost a lot of money. There's other ways of doing it. Um, now. I know in class that I show you how to create the divots. Um, that is for 
you know, for your um, for your enjoyment as far as learning how to do something like that, um, hard surface modeling. But as far as the dice go, it's really not necessary because there's other ways of doing this. So with this, we've got the um, basic uh, structure for this. We've got the duplicate, so now we can go ahead and smooth this. Um, when we work with uh, high poly models, we want to keep it uh, fairly smooth. Um, we're going to go start with three. This will work really well with ZBrush. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and reset. This uh, sets it up at one. Let's go ahead and type in three again. I just wanted to make sure everything else in here was um, uh, defaulted out. Okay, smooth it. All right, that looks pretty good. And you may find yourself, hmm, that's really, those are really sharp edges, and I'm not really digging that too much. But you know, if you don't like it, you can always go back and double click on these and uh, basically move them down. Um, you can double click on these and do a, a scale so that you can do two at once. So double click on that and this and uh, scale these in a little bit. There we go. And uh, this stuff uh, is pretty easy to move and uh, scale so you know don't worry about it. Uh, if you make mistakes uh, go back and change them. Not a big deal. So now we're going to go back in here and let's get back into a selection mode, which is Q. And let's go ahead and I'm going to get out my attribute editor and just make sure we have everything cleaned up. And I'm going to go and do the smooth again as well. So smooth. There we go. We got three. Everything's set up right. Good. That looks a little better. I like that. Okay, let's go back to your low poly. You got your high poly. Turn that off in your layers and turn your high poly or low poly on. Let's go ahead and, and do a, a bevel on this. So bevel is under edit mesh and go under bevel in the option box and we're going to do two on here. And we'll start with a 0.1 and sometimes I've done a 0.8 on here but let's take a look at what this does. Alright, so it does a pretty good job. Um, I need to, to see uh, one of the things I'm missing is my poly count up here. So I'm going to go to display, heads up display, and poly count. And as you can see, I'm at 54. This is a good place to be. Let's go ahead and go in. And the only thing I don't like about this is that when I click off, I get this tight, really hard edge right here. And I really want this to be a smooth edge. Let's go ahead and fix that. Um, let's go in here and double click on this. And double click on this. And do all of the corners, uh, the inside corners, not the outside corners and we're going to smooth those. Okay. And Okay, hit the Q key. I'm getting some having some troubles selecting everything. All right. Make sure you hold down the space or the sh uh, shift key to add. There you go. And I didn't know if you knew this or not, but you could hold the shift and the uh, the control key at the same time and add to your selection. So shift and control will add to your selection. There we go. Looks good. So now hold down your space bar and go to normals and soften. There we go. And let's take a look at what we got. That looks great. Okay. Smooth as a baby's bud, if, if you will. And then let's go in here. All right. Okay. And um, let's go in here. Sometimes um, a lot of you, you know, might be thinking, why don't you just go in here normals and just do the whole thing, soften edge? Well, you can, I suppose. Uh, sometimes it causes problems with the flat areas, and if it does, then you'll just have to to select the edges that you need to smooth. Okay, just remember that. Let's go back to the high poly, and of course, it's going to look a lot smoother. But from a distance, let's take a look at both of those. Um, I want to have them both on now, so select V on both and select them both and we're going to do a couple of commands edit delete by types history okay and then of course modify freeze transformations and since they're sharing the same exact space uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull the low poly out of the way so we can kind of see them together from a distance they look great okay let's take that low poly and let's put that back at zero All right. Um, you're basically now ready to export these objects out um, um, as OBJs.
but before we can export out um, and get ready for XNormal or whatever package we're going to do use as far as um, probably have to go to ZBrush first for the for the high poly sculpting um, we're going to have to take this uh, cube and we're going to have to lay out the UVs and that will be in this next video